everyone, and welcome to my channel, Alan's Cloud. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about uh, a, a new security tool that caught my eye off of a, a post uh, on Reddit from the self-hosted community out there. Uh, and I think it's awesome, and I think more people ought to be using it and uh, be aware of it. So I'm going to try to uh, uh, highlight uh, some of the cool features uh, that it has today and show you how to install it uh, into a, uh, an LXC container. Uh, in Proxmox. Um, you can install it into a virtual machine, that's super easy, uh, but I find that um, you know with the specificity of, of what this is for uh, and the fact that it uses Docker anyway, um, you know it's really suited well for a, a container, uh, an LXC. Um, but uh, you know it, when I saw this tool, I, I got into this, you know let's let's focus on security and privacy. Uh, and it kind of led me down this rabbit trail of, um, of different options. So what I ended up doing, I ended up creating a, um, uh, with my virt uh, VPN provider, I ended up creating uh, in my PFSense router uh, a, a client connection to my uh, custom VPN provider. Um, and... Using that and some policy-based routing, uh, there's a kill switch in there now, and this, this new Chasm server, which we'll go over today, is sitting out there, and it's actually using that VPN connection. Uh, and I've also got a couple of other tools, and uh, so uh, I'll have, uh, over the course of the next few weeks, several videos coming out where I'm going to show you how to, um, you know, today I'm going to show you how to install Chasm and, and what that's all about. Uh, but in these other videos, I'm actually going to show you how to... Um, you know, make those changes and actually install. Uh, if, if you're using um, a PFSense firewall, I'll show you what it took to, to make that work. I struggled with that, and hopefully I can help you guys out. And, uh, you know, I'll do some other videos on some Docker options uh, for, you know, if you don't have uh, a PFSense firewall and you just want to use Docker. Uh, so those will be interesting. But uh, uh, if you're interested in Chasm here today, and I think you should be, uh, stick around. So let's get started today talking about Chasm. Um, this is a great tool. It's basically, um, you know, inside of your browser, it'll bring up a separate sandboxed browser, and you can have Firefox, you can have Chrome, you can have a Tor browser, and you can actually have a desktop as well, um, and it's all completely disposable. You fire it up, it's basically as quick as spinning up a Docker container because that's what it actually is under the hood. Um, and it brings you up another browser instance and you can go basically surf wherever you want without having to worry about you know clicking on sketchy links uh, in fact if you have a need to you know click on a sketchy link from somebody um, that's one way to do it um, you know there's so many different use cases for this particular software um, you know if, if you've got young children and they like to go out to some of those gaming sites um, that are the online games and for whatever reason uh, they, they can't help themselves and they install these, uh, you know, browser extensions or there's so many different pop-ups or advertisements and things like that. Um, you know, and, and you don't want to have to worry about reconfiguring your main browser or it messing with your uh, computer that they use. You can, you know, have them use a Chasm, uh, you know, uh, uh, pop-up and, and or browser rather, and uh, it will work perfectly fine. So let's go over a little bit of that right now. Let me show you. So uh, here on my Heimdall, I created a, uh, a page for it. So I click on this and it brings me to the self-hosted Chasm server. So we'll get there in just a second. Uh, but here on their homepage, you know, this is what they're all about, Chasm, a secure computing platform, right? So um, basically, you know, these isolated remote applications, those are the browsers uh, and the desktops, you know, they show up inside of this browser and, I, and I'll show you what that looks like. But um, you know, it's browser isolation, you know, basically a remote desktop. If you've ever used guacamole, that's kind of what it looks like on the inside here. Uh, and they say, you know, for training and collaboration, because you can actually share screens with other users. Um, so there are many, many different features um, of, of what this can actually be used for. Uh, and the use cases uh, for at home, if you're a self-hoster and have your own home lab, or if you're a business, um, you know, this is, this is kind of cool because... Uh, you know, it, it, it takes a lot of effort to to train your people, uh, but they still can make mistakes. And, and so to kind of give them a bit of a safety net, you might want to take a look at, um, you know, uh, uh, purchasing a, you know, one of their 
actual paid for subscription services with users and you know allowing um, them to your 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 users to you know open links and and open um, uh, and go to websites inside of chasm just in case there's anything malicious especially if, if your office catches these things uh, all the time um, so um, here in in docker uh, you know, you, you actually see kind of what's going on under the hood when you install it, the, the Chasm Desktop, uh, Desktop Deluxe, and I'll show you the difference between those two, uh, Firefox Chrome, Firefox Mobile, there's the Tor Browser, uh, and then also if you scroll down here, they actually did a little bit of testing here. They haven't, you know, really done anything with it in nine months, but you can actually install uh, this Kali Linux. Um, you know, so that uh, there is a way to do that and add that to the desktop. It doesn't come with it standard, uh, but you can actually add that. Uh, so let me show you what this looks like. I click on Chasm here, actually log in. You can use the, uh, you know, create user accounts, uh, but this is what it normally comes with, an admin account and a user account. We log into the admin account here. And uh, you, you, you're, you're faced with, uh, in this account, all the different options for configuring this for your users. Uh, but it works perfectly fine for, for you as the admin as well. But let me just show you what it is here under the, the Chasm tab. Uh, you have this Chasm Chrome, Chasm Desktop, uh, the Desktop Deluxe. Uh, and basically the difference between the, the Chasm Desktop and the Desktop Deluxe is the productivity software that you get inside of this one. Uh, this one has Microsoft Teams installed in it uh, and, and several other very you know, handy tools uh, for a disposable desktop environment. Um, but you see here you've got the Tor browser and you've got Firefox. Uh, so you hit create, and um, that's it. Uh, I mean, the, the, the browser has, has just popped up, and now you are actually a browser inside of, you know, your normal browser. Um, but you can go here to, you know, wherever you want. And uh, let me just actually show you that this is sitting inside of my VPN by actually going to Google, and you can see I'm popping up here in Canada. So love this. Uh, and it's, it's literally just that easy. Uh, over here on the left, you, you have the different options. Uh, you have a uh, clipboard. If you need to copy something from uh, inside of this disposable chasm, uh, you can, uh, uh, when you uh, copy it inside of there, it'll show up here. Uh, you can actually, if you need to copy something inside, like another browser link, you can copy it and paste it into this little box right here. Uh, and then when you, you know, click and paste inside of the chasm, it'll show up there as well. And uh, so same thing with the download and the upload here. If you download something inside of the chasm, it will show up in the download folder. And uh, you can actually access it and, and grab it out of the sandbox and bring it to your main machine here, uh, you know, through this interface. Uh, it will show up. Uh, you can have uh, audio, so you know if you go to YouTube, you can actually watch YouTube videos on here. Any of the other streaming sites, uh, you can actually have your your microphone that is turned off by default, but you can change all of that in the um, the settings. Uh, here, the video is actually how much of the refresh rate um, that you want Chasm to actually use, and and of course that's system resources. Um, so uh, here on you can share the screen uh, with other folks, you know. Uh, and then when you're done with this, it's, it's you, you can you can log out uh, and and have it still uh, working, or you can just simply destroy it, and it destroys that particular instance of the of the browser, and none of that data. There's no cookies. There's no uh, you know um, no history. There's no nothing. Uh, and with this sitting out inside of my VPN tunnel. I don't have to worry about uh, tracking from either my ISP or from anybody else for that matter. Uh, and granted, I understand I'm moving the point of trust from, you know, my uh, ISP out to whoever my VPN provider is. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. But, uh, you know, this, this, uh, the, the uses for this, when, when you have a user that is set up, you can actually per profile, as soon as you log in, it can launch immediately into whatever one of these applications you want. Uh, so the bells and whistles and the, the setup for this for the, from the user perspective is, is uh, very configurable. Um, you know, some, some of the things here, um, when you actually go to change settings 
for your users, you would think that you'd go to settings, but that's not technically where it is. Um, here under uh, groups, if you want to change what it is for your, um, you know, the features, like for your users in here, um, they, they normally don't have audio enabled, right? So that's just not something that's there. You would think here under the edit button that that's where you would go, but again, that's not actually where it is. You have to view the settings for it. You scroll down and all of these settings right here, I actually have them turned on for my users, but you know, this is where you add all of those uh, options so that the individual user accounts can, can do all of those features as well, or you can leave them removed. If you don't want them to be able to copy things and, and use the clipboard or where you want them to be able to do that, but you don't want them downloading files. You know, it's completely understandable um, that, that you might want to, you know, disable some of those things or you don't want them using some of the bandwidth for streaming sites like YouTube. You know, they can technically watch it, but if they can't hear it, you know, that's um, maybe uh, a different story in wanting to use it. But uh, there are so many different options here. Uh, you can actually, if you're, you're running this, you can redirect so that uh, links that you click on will automatically open a chasm uh, inside of the browser. Um, so the tool itself, these guys, uh, they have, have put a lot of thought into this, um, and it's a, a very super useful tool, guys um, I, I, and gals. I, 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 think it's, it's, um, I think this is some next level stuff. I think this is where it's headed, and I really hope that uh, the community embraces the, the chasm folks here uh, and, uh, you know, helps out and, you know, make some other chasm containers and maybe applications that are all, you know, built in it so that, that uh, um, you know, those can be uploaded to Docker Hub. Some, some folks have already started to do that, but this is, this is just in the beginning, folks. This is, this is uh, um, I think, where it all starts for these folks. I think I see good things uh, in the future for, for chasm. Um, so the thing about installing chasm, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and log out of this, and I'm going to shut it down because we're going to create a new one. So here's my chasm, and we're going to just shut that down. It's super easy because it actually is an LXC. So it's very, very quick. And uh, while that's shutting down, we'll go ahead and take a look at the standard installation here uh, from their website. Um, you can see this is uh, essentially what it is. You've got your end users. They're going to go into a browser. Uh, they're going to log into that Chasm server. And that Chasm server is going to actually launch um, you know, a Chasm browser or a Chasm desktop. And that uh, inside of that sandbox is what's going to be connecting to the greater internet. So that's, that's essentially what it is. Um, with the standard installation, there are two different kinds here. There's the standard and the multi-server installation. Standard is, is, is easy, and that's what I've started with here. Um, you know, if you're a bigger organization, maybe the multi-server is, is for you, but, um, you know, I try out this standard installation. It's, it's super easy. Um, the normal port that it runs on is 443. So if you're going to run this in a reverse proxy, uh, and a lot of people might end up doing that, then... There is a way to change that. Uh, that's 443 is in the script, uh, the install script, uh, but you can uh, put a flag in there at the beginning to change that port, and I highly suggest that. Um, so scrolling down here, uh, they do recommend that you install this on a solid state drive. They also recommend that you uh, enable a swap partition. Now we're going to give, in the LXC, we're going to give this some, some swap here. Um, and, and here is, is actually when you run uh, the install, um, the extra flag, the, the DAC, uh, TAC, uh, capital L and 8443 or whatever the port it is that you want to ru run it on. That's what it is. Uh, but we're going to run through this. This, uh, this is essentially, um, the install. Uh, we need to change things a little bit because we're doing this into an LXC. Um, and there is no sudo. So, the, um, all, we're going to have to edit a couple of files in order to make this work. But as soon as we do that with that minor amount of effort, you know, as soon as you run this install script, uh, you're going to be good to go. This thing will fire up. It'll be sitting there waiting on the port for you. Uh, so it'll be super easy. Um, so we'll get to these uh, default login stuff here in a minute. 
All right, so let's look at the system requirements. Uh, so for the operating system, uh, as I said, you can do this in a virtual machine if you want to. Uh, I actually did install it into a Ubuntu uh, 20.04 and it worked perfectly fine. But, you know, again, I think that, that the way that this Docker stack is, is, is what this chasm is, is built on really lends itself towards an LXC. Um, but I, I really, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not the greatest at Docker. I, I do enjoy it. I, I think it's great and I am learning. But uh, there were, you know, I, I could not get a normal Docker, um, you know, uh, LXC container, you know, with Docker installed into the, the uh, LXC of Ubuntu 20.04. Uh, so I, I ended up finding what did work, though. Uh, so the, the turnkey Linux folks, uh, you have templates that are already built into Proxmox and, uh, we're going to use one of those, uh, because it's actually built off of Debian 10. And as you can see here, uh, that is one of the supported, uh, operating systems. Uh, so their recommendations here, uh, they're going to, uh, recommend two cores, four gigs for the memory and at least 30 gigabytes. Again, they do recommend on a solid state drive. That's really going to help your performance, uh, in spinning these things up and making it you know, really snappy for your users. Uh, so that's about it. Um, here uh, for the turnkey Linux, this is the one that we're going to be using. It's the turnkey core. And you will find this already uh, installed in your Proxmox. Uh, and if it's not available, we can we can work on that too. Uh, but it should be there. So it's the turnkey core. And um, again, this is actually uh, the latest one. And it is built off of uh, a Debian 10. So it will be compatible with this. Uh, so essentially what we're going to do here. We're going to go to Proxmox. My, my chasm is uh, LXE is already shut down. So uh, the first thing that you're going to have to do here is um, wherever you store your ISO files right for me i actually have it on a nas and so it's it's networked in uh, so you're going to click on that now you may uh, store it on the local lvm wherever it is um, you're going to go to and for me again it's this nas you're going to go to content here and this is where again i keep all of my iso files now if you scroll down this is where your container templates reside as well these are the ones that i have already downloaded and uh, as you can see i already do have the the, the turnkey core which is based off of Debian 10 right here, the 1601. Uh, but if you don't have it, you come up here to templates and uh, up here in the search box, you can just type core. You can either scroll down or there it is. Um, you know, it's, it's that easy. You click on that and uh, select download. Again, I already have it, uh, but that is what you're going to need in order to uh, install Chasm here today following these instructions. All right, so now that we know that we have that, we are going to hit Create CT. Uh, this does need to be a privileged container. Now, one of the more recent changes in Proxmox is, is and, and, and it's a good thing, um, they automatically select that containers are unprivileged and as a default, and I, and I think that's a good change. But all of the turnkey Linuxes, um, the templates, uh, have to be pri privileged containers. Um, and they, you know, they've got, um, uh, firewalls and, and, and things built into them. Um, you've got a shell, there's, there's all kinds of, of, uh, bits and pieces to these things that, um, they're a pretty high confidence item. Uh, so we're going to, uh, call this chasm test and we're going to pick a password here and do it again. Okay, we're going to go to next. All right, so again, where our storage template is, is what it's asking for here. So I'm going to go to my NAS ISOs, uh, and I'm going to select that uh, turnkey core uh, right here, Debian 10 turnkey core. We're going to hit next. Uh, so again, the hard drive, uh, uh, my local LVM is the only actual uh, solid state drive, so that's actually where I've got mine installed. Uh, but I'm going to this uh, SAS drive here and we're going to give it uh, 32 gigs again uh, minimum was 30 we'll just give it 32 not a big deal we're going to give this two cores 
And uh, here, this is the 4096 for four gigs, and here 1024 for that uh, gigabit of swap space. Uh, let's see here. Um, we're going to give it a, uh, a static IP address. 92.168.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
And it's a little odd, but instead of stay on page, you want to hit leave page. Proxmox uh, is now picking up those migrations uh, when it reboots like that. So we are back up and running. We're going to go to root and our password again. Okay, and now we are logged in. Uh, so first thing that we're going to do here, uh, we did install some security updates before. But let's just make sure that we've caught everything, right? So we're going to do an apt get update. Okay, and then we're going to do an apt get upgrade. And hit yes. And this can take a minute, so I'll probably fast forward here too. We don't need the postfix configuration. We're going to actually hit OK. Uh, no configuration. OK. And that is it uh, as far as our upgrades are concerned. Now let's get to the actual fun part. Uh, so let's go to CD dot dot. Uh, that should bring us there. So we are going to go to the temp folder because anything that we install here when we reboot is going to be gone. So that's kind of handy. Um, so first thing that we need to do is we need to actually get the install. And uh, it's one of the things that they don't have uh, in the install process uh, on their web page. I, I think they should have a wget link in there that you guys can copy and paste. Um, I'm going to actually put that down in the description below. Uh, but we're going to copy and we're going to paste that in here. So that is the wget link. And it's going to go out and actually grab and download that uh, Chasm installer. And so now, just so you can see it, there it is. So the next step, we need to actually uh, basically unzip that using a tar command. Now what that's done is actually created our folder here, chasm release. Okay. So we are going to uh, CD into that chasm folder. And if you just hit tab after a couple of letters, it should auto resolve it. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, actually edit the uh, install script, right? So this install.sh. So we're going to hit nano install.sh and so here you have uh, several lines and again these scripts were made for putting into a virtual machine or a normal installation uh, here in this uh, turnkey setup basically a root uh, so there is no sudo and when you try to run these scripts uh, with those sudo in there uh, it's going to fail so we're going to remove all of those uh, uh, again, I'm going to leave a description down below and uh, actually I'll, I'll probably pop up a screen that shows you exactly where to remove these things uh, with instructions. Uh, so we are going to hit control and shift and then the dash sign. And that is going to ask us for a number input. So the first line here in this install.sh is uh, 271. So you're going to type 271 and hit enter. So here it has brought us to the first line. And, uh, you know, kind of confusing because it doesn't look like it's there, but it is. It's over here off to the side. And the tricky thing about these things, um, you see where the S is there? This is the sudo that we're going to be removing. You actually need to start here with the, the D on Docker, uh, highlight it essentially with your with your uh, keys, and then just hit backspace until the D is where the S was on sudo. So in all of these, you have to be that careful and, and make sure that you do this correctly or else you can break the script. Okay, so now that we have that edit in place, we're going to get uh, control shift and the dash, and we're going to go to line 300. All right, so this one is fairly easy. Because the pseudo is right there. So that's that one. 
All right, we're going to go to 305. Or you, I suppose we could have just scrolled down. Again, this one is relatively easy. All right, 459 is the next one. And uh, right there. All right, next one is 474. Again, pretty easy. Next one and last one for this is 595. Okay, so when you're done, and again, five, this is the last one for here, you're going to hit Control and the O and uh, hit Enter because it's basically going to overwrite uh, installed at SH, which was there before with all the changes that we've just made. So you hit Enter and then you hit Control uh, X, exit, right? So we have just edited the install.sh, and now we actually need to um, this install underscore dependencies.sh. Got a couple of lines in there that we need to actually go uh, remove sudo from as well, and then we will be done. So we're going to hit nano install underscore dependencies.sh. All right, so control shift and dash once again. And the first line with sudo in it is line 40. So right here, highlight the Y and backspace to right there. Control shift dash again. Line 71 is our next one. And it is over here. So you highlight the A and bring it right there. Control shift dash again. I'm going to go to line 88. And sudo is at the beginning. Okay, control shift dash once more. Line 100, the final one. It is all the way over here. And uh, once again, we're going to hit control O for out to write out these changes. Hit enter. And then control X, and we are done uh, as far as that is concerned. So since we are in this folder, uh, where the install script is what we're going to do here is we're just going to actually initiate this the, the script so dot slash uh, install on sh then again we're going to throw this uh, tack uh, capital L flag out here and we're going to call this 8444 for me you use whatever you want <laughs> and uh, when we hit enter here we go. We're starting this. The, the, the script is starting to actually do the install. We're going to hit yes here for the end user license agreement. Uh, so the first part that it's going to do here, uh, because this system is brand new, it doesn't have uh, Docker already installed on it. So it's actually going to go out and grab the uh, all of the packages and the dependencies that are needed for uh, installing Docker. And again, I'm going to go ahead and uh, fast forward this part installed and uh, what it's doing right now it's actually configuring uh, the databases for chasm uh, the database uh, and then it's actually uh, at the moment it's going to pull down all of the different docker dependencies that it needs to create this, the, the chasm stack at this point it's actually pulling the uh, docker files for all of the different chasm uh, browsers, you know, Firefox and Chrome and uh, the, the um, desktop environments as well. All right, so that took a while uh, to download all of that, but uh, this is the final credentials uh, page that pops out uh, when you uh, uh, install Chasm here. So again, I recommend either writing all these down, copying and pasting them into a text file, or you know what I usually do is I take a snapshot 
um, just with, with the Windows Snip tool, and I'll keep a, a picture of that, uh, you know, in a handy location, uh, just in case I ever need to come back. Now, one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to, you know, change the username. Um, well, not the username necessarily, but at least, at the very least, the passwords uh, for the admin, right? So uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy that one here just for now. And then we're going to go and we're going to go back to our main Firefox. Right here. Okay. And I'm going to cheat a little bit since I already have these set up. Uh, so when I click on this one, uh, what I'm going to do here, uh, I'm going to change this. We created it at 219 and we created it at 8444 for this demo. Uh, and I'm just going to take that last bit off. I know it should work, but just so that's what you would normally get, you're going to have to accept the security risk of the self signed certificate. All right, uh, so the, the admin at uh, chasm dot local, and I'm going to paste this password in there. And uh, I wouldn't save that at this point. But uh, as you can see, we have a brand new Chasm instance up and running uh, that we just installed. And, um, you know, here under the Chasms, again, you have this, the stock standard ones uh, for the Tor browser. And uh, so if I hit create right now, you will see a difference in this one uh, because, you know, it popped up just as uh, nicely as the other one did. Um, but the difference being this one if i go to google.com here um you know this is actually going through my normal internet connection uh through my isp and not uh through the vpn uh because i don't have the particular ip address that we use to create this chasm uh in that special group inside of ps sense so that's it for uh installing chasm uh, into an LXC inside of uh, Proxmox. It's uh, fairly easy. There are a couple extra steps that we had to go through there. Um, and, um, you know, you are now running Docker inside of uh, an, an LXC. So you can also take advantage of that for uh, other uses as well. Uh, keep in mind, this thing is uh, supposed to be there using those resources uh, for chasms, but uh, you can install Portainer in there. You can, you know, basically install any other Docker container you want um, and, you know, run Heimdall like I do in there or Bookstack. There's there's all kinds of different uses uh, for an LXC container that is running Docker, in my opinion. Um, it's uh, super easy. It's uh, relatively small. Um, and because you are running a privileged container, you can also set up, um, you know, connections for NFS or uh, CIFS Samba shares. Uh, so all kinds of different uses for those things. But um, I think that's it for today. Uh, if you've got any questions, you can reach out to me on any of these social uh, accounts here uh, or, you know, please respond to the videos. And, uh, you know, again, uh, I'm going to be doing several videos on the how to's on the PF sense and, uh, uh, you know, other Docker containers uh, focusing on VPN and using you know, sort of the non-standard, you know, custom uh, VPN uses. I use uh, one called IBVPN and, um, you know, it, uh, they're going to be some interesting videos. So uh, please, uh, you know, like this video if it came in useful and uh, please subscribe and hit that bell so that you get a, uh, awareness when those next videos come out. Thanks. Have a good one.